beautiful house that had this, this, this white, beautiful, expensive fence all around it. And there was two beautiful cars, new cars, parked in a certain drive. And it had these gates that swung open, and they happened to be open this day. And guess what was sitting inside those gates? That Lincoln was sitting inside those gates. That's where she lived. Those two new cars out in front of her, that were her cars. She didn't live better than I ever thought about living. <laughs> she had that old car just so she could go to places and get money and get food. They did better than I did. <laughs> well, this will happen a few weeks later. They came to church. And they wanted to help, help again. And I said, let me ask you, I said, do you live in such and such place? Just, what, what, what are we talking about? That's why I broke by one day. saw that car I parked inside. You know, she got up and left there just as quick as she came in. Maybe a little bit. We need to be wise. But make sure the need is really there. Don't let people use us and abuse us. Because of our Christian generosity, make sure the need is really there. But when the need is there, we have the means to meet that need. Then thirdly, be loving enough to want to share. <coughs> loving enough to want to share. And that's where we're going to be at this day. One of the reasons we are blessed by God is so that we might help others. Paul said this in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Let him that straight still spill no more. Let him stone still no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, and watch this, he may have to give to him that needs. Let him labor with his hands, and he may have to give to give them needs. That's the reason why we work is to take care of self, of course, take care of family, of course, but to help others who are in need. If we show our bowels of compassion to our brother in need, how can we say that the love of God dwells in us, right? We simply can't get there. Look at James chapter 2 with me. James 2 and uh, verses 15 and 16. James chapter 2, verse 15 verse 16. James says, If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and what if you say to them, Depart in peace, be warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body? What does it profit? It doesn't profit them anything, does it? But listen to this. It doesn't profit you. It doesn't profit you. And we need to be a loving, kind person. Be willing to go the extra mile and help those in need. And there are many. Who are in need. Third and last. Oh, too far did See, he said I had so much time, I stopped talking, I couldn't look at that clock, so I tried to stop within an hour. So I believe I'll make it. <laughs> Third, and I will give this to you real quick today. Is this here? There are great blessings to those who show love and not indifference. Number one is this: the blessing of insurance. Found in 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 20. That's what he says. Let's go back, okay? Uh, I need to read this here. 1 John 3, 19 through 20. Hereby we know that we are of truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For our heart and him and us, God is greater than our hearts, and knoweth all things. There's assurance, isn't there? Assurance we have from God. To know that we have done the right thing. To know we're not condemned by God. And then secondly, there are answered prayers. Look at verse 21 uh, and 22 for the same text. It says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God, and whatsoever we ask, we shall receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And then thirdly, there is a body of presence in verses 23 and 24. This is commanded that we should believe on the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And he that keepeth uh, His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that we abide in, in us by the Spirit which He has given us. When we do that which is right, there is this a 
abiding presence of Jesus Christ in our lives, and we'll be blessed because of that. There are so much that we need to do. The attitude that we need to have is so important. Love versus indifference. The question you need to ask, the question I need to ask is this. Which side do I stand on? Which side do I stand on? Am I indifferent toward those in need? Or do I have the kind of love that I need to have? And I'd be willing to give my own life to the cause of someone else in the service of Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that it's the matter and not the idea of being indifferent. Maybe this morning that you're not a child of God. And if you're not a child of God, I want you to know that our Lord loves you. Our Lord loves you so much that He was willing to die on the cross of Calvary because He had you in mind this very hour. He had you in mind this very hour that He wanted to bring salvation to your soul. That you might one day live with Him throughout all eternity. Jesus said this here in John 3, verse 5. This is for Nicodemus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There must be a new birth to take place in your life. That new birth uh, consists of making the great confession and believe the name of Jesus Christ. Making that great confession that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Repenting of your sins as they did the day of Pentecost, Acts 2 and verse 38. And then baptized for the remission of your sins to rise and walk in the of life. Let me ask you this. If you've been present on the day of Pentecost and heard that great sermon that Peter and the other apostles preached, what would have been your response to that sermon? The Bible says that they were pricked in their hearts when they heard that sermon. Acts 2, verse 37. And cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter stood up and said this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells us in verse 47 that about 3,000 of them were added to the church that day. The Lord had dirt day in the church day, so it should be saved. There was about 3,000 responding to the gospel. There were a host of others who responded in a negative way. I hope this morning your response will not be in a negative way, but rather in a positive way and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior as you go down in that watered grave and rise to walk in the newness of life and call upon the name of the Lord. It may be that you are done this morning. If there are things in your life that are missed that you need to repent of, you need to come back to your first love. <coughs> Whatever you need to do, we'll bring you a bit at this very hour as you understand. Let me walk with the Lord.